Hello world and welcome to this edition of Tech on Fire with Blaze and Blaze Stewart, Architect and Elected. Today we're going to be looking at part two of our two-part series on Custo Query Language. Hi guys, today we're going to be looking at Custo again, and we're going to be looking at Custo query language from the angle of doing joins and visualizations. So this is basically going to get us the ability to bring multiple tables together and then be able to filter that data just like we would if we were working on a single table. So I'm back in the Azure portal. I'm looking at the same data set that I used last week, and this is using some of the log management tables that come as defaults whenever you install the agent on a couple of different machines that you might have. I have a couple of these coming in from Windows machines as well as a syslog table coming from a Linux machine. And this is basically all my firewall data that I have coming in off of a syslog into my particular workspace. And we're going to be looking at uh, how to join some of these things today and some of the queries, which are pretty basic. So we're not going to be getting too deep in the weeds on this, but we do want to look at a few things that we can talk about here. So the first thing that we want to talk about is just a regular uh, join. Now, if I take this query right here and I want to join two tables together, typically that's done on a joining column. So let me format this query and it looks like this where I have, I say which table I want to work with and I say which table I want to join to. I'm going to join to performance on a particular column and then I say what's the joining column going to be. And this is basically just looking for quality between two different columns. Now this works well whenever you have relational type data. So if you're basically looking for a data in a table that has a reference back to another table that might have more detailed information this works well so performance might be a good table to join back to the heartbeat table because the heartbeat table is basically going to give me data about the machines that are reporting into my system and i can use that for information about the actual computers that I'm looking in. And then I can also use the join to a performance table, which is going to have more frequent updates probably from uh, various sources about the actual metrics that are going on in that computer. And that's going to be multifaceted. Now there, there are many different kinds of things that are in the performance table that aren't in the actual heartbeat table. So let's go ahead and run this query. I'm just going to take 10 and uh, see what this uh, returns. So this is just returning some information about uh, one machine since I just took 10, but I've got multiple machines here. But I'm getting a couple of different columns from these various tables. So this one's coming from both of col uh, both tables because it's the joining column. And then this one's coming from the heartbeat table. This one is coming from the performance table. This one's coming from the performance table. And this one is coming from the uh, performance table. So you can see here I have a couple of different columns from both tables and I am presenting that as a single table. So joins are a very nice way to handle bringing data together and that works well for a lot of cases where you have, like as I said, a joining column between two different kinds of data. Now unions, another kind of join that you can do and basically what this is going to do is give you data that is common to both tables and what it attempts to do is take two tables and look for the a common set of columns if or all the columns if you say an outer uh, kind is outer and it's basically going to try to give you a, a sub uh, superset of the data and then dedupe it if there's any kind of duplication going on uh, within those two uh, data tables that you might have so if I was joining this uh, heartbeat table to the performance table using enter it's just going to return the common columns they have and then it's going to attempt to then dedupe the data if there is any duplication among those common columns. So if I run this, it's going to just return a couple of different uh, columns that aren't aren't a lot of uh, data in those columns that are common between the two tables. So that's why I'm not getting a lot of different uh, data types here. This is more useful for whenever you have two different tables that have the same schema. That means they have the same set of columns that are the same kind of data types. And this is going to be, we're going to see this again when we look about at how to join across different workspaces, because oftentimes in a given log in the workspace, you might have two different tables that have the same columns, but they exist in two different workspaces and using the cross workspace uh, query you can use unions to bring those together into a common table and then create those as well so again a very useful feature i'm just looking at it from a more basic standpoint right here 
Now, another uh, good way to join data is using uh, subqueries. Now, subqueries are an interesting way because they're not doing joins per se, but it gives you the ability to do query, uh, have a query, and then have the output of it, that query be used in a secondary query. So in this one, what I have here is I have this first query right here that says, let Linux equal the output of this query. So it's basically looking at the heartbeat table where the OS type is Linux and it's doing a summary uh, by computer. So if I run that, I'm probably only gonna get one record. And if, let's see, a uh, non-tabular statement right here, let me, um, I have, oh, that's because I'm assigning it to a variable. I need just to select the, the tab, the, the query part. So if I did this by Windows right here, I should get more results. Um, that's just gonna change the uh, parameter there. And I have two machines there that have the name Windows. So uh, now what that's just doing is just giving me a list uh, that's returning the results of this query right here and putting it into this variable right here called Linux. So let me set this back to Linux right here. And when I have the output from that, I can then take that and use that in another query. And so what this allows me to do is basically take a query and chain it to another query. And so this is going to do performance where computer is in Linux. The output from this query is now being used in the input for this query in the filter. So if I run the whole thing together, I should just get a list of performance counters where the a computer is in the Linux list, which is uh, happens to be the one machine I have, which is Untangle. And if I was to change that to Windows, we'd, we'd, we should, we might get uh, results from um, the, both the Windows machines that I have here. It's just returning from the one machine that I have currently running the, the agent on, but you know, the, the output is from the computer uh, right here is the name of the field that I'm getting while I'm just using that in the list here. So again, a very useful way to build a simplified list and then take the output from that simplified list and use it in another query. And that's what we would call a subquery in that case. Now, another way to use unions is, is like this, where we can use the union to take data across different workspaces and bring it together. So this union looks like the other one that we had, except in this case, what I'm doing is I'm getting data from one workspace and I'm using data from another workspace and I'm using the same table between those. The workspace one and workspace two so event tables, I'm taking that data and then I'm performing a union on it. And then that's basically going to give me the superset of that data, dedupe it, and then it's gonna return the results. And this will allow me to filter data based on time generated, or I can just treat it like a single table now. Now this is again useful for when the data is the same, which in the case of event, it is the same. So I can run this and this get a superset of data, and I'm just summarizing it based on whatever data shows up in the event table, which in this case is the data from the second workspace, and this is from the other, uh, the, the first workspace. So those two came in from this, this side of the union, and um, the other one came in from the second side of the union right there. So let me repaste that in there because I ended up clicking away from it. And having that data available means now that I can use a single query um, to get data from multiple workspaces rather than having to do some kind of export scheme and so on. And this works across workspaces, across regions and so on. So you might want to take into consideration what you're trying to get out of the data when you do unions and, and be uh, mindful of the regions that you're querying in because that can also introduce some latency into certain kinds of queries. But in any case, this returns uh, just a set of data that you can see here and it returns pretty quickly because those are fairly small tables. So that's how those are four different ways to use unions and bring data together using joins and uh, unions as well as subqueries and very useful for creating relationships between different tables and then filtering those relationships based on parameters that you can put in. Now, another thing that you can do with Custo is create quick uh, visualizations with this. So if I wanted to create a quick visualization, say from a summary, and I wanted it look, it look something like this, where I have the heartbeat table, and this one is basically going to summarize it based on the count, and that's the number of records in the, um, the heartbeat table by computer. So I want to summarize the data by computer, and then if I say render pie chart, it's basically going to break that down into the parts that 
compose the count. So if I run that query without the render, just um, take this piece of it right here, you can see the results right there. It's roughly broken down into a third. So if I run that whole thing and render it, you see I basically get thirds uh, from the three records uh, that I get back from the summarize here by computer in the heartbeat. So that's a more one dimensional table looking at the parts, but you can also do you know, things like two dimensional tables, which if I just take this query right here and let's clean this up a little bit. This one is doing a little bit more, uh, it's a little more involved than uh, the one we just looked at and I'm um, trying to clean it up here a little bit so that we can uh, see what's going on and I'm copying and pasting this. There we go. So this one is looking for processor type where it's looking at the performance table, looking for processor type. The counter name is percent of CPU time and it's looking for a specific computer. And what it's doing is a summary of the average um, of, com of the computer value. That's because it's applying this filter to it. It's getting the CPU average from the counter value by the computer. <clears throat> and then it's binning it up based on time. So this is basically taking one hour uh, slices and then doing the average over one hour slices. So this gives me ability to create uh, a set of data based on a time box. And then I can sort that, you know, sending or what have you. If I was to run that without the render, I'm going to get some results that look like this. Now, this doesn't tell me a whole lot. It's just you know, presenting a table. And, you know, that's fine for, for many things. But if I wanted to get a visualization of what that looks like over time, I can add the render bar chart. And what that's going to do is kind of give me a visualization of what that looks like. So I've got the time axis on this side and the CPU average on this side. And then I can see how that, that plays out over time. So if I wanted to change the interval to say one minute, I could run this. It could take a little while, long, a little bit while to compute it, and but you get a much more granular view of what's going on. And if I wanted to do it over 10-minute increments or five-minute increments, you know, you can see I can change that increment very easily and summarize the data very quickly using different time slices depending on what I'm looking at. So I can get those two-dimensional uh, charts as well as the, the one-dimensional charts, which I see with the pie chart and so on. So creating visualization is very easy to do in Custo, and this is very good for when you're doing research into things like log analytics and these kinds of things. It gives you the ability to quickly create it so you can see visually how the data looks and trend it, and then you can kind of see, oh, I can see problem areas and what have you that are easier to spot and say a visualization like this than they are in just the raw data. So again, some very useful features of Custo. So that wraps up our Custo uh, video that we're going to be doing today. Uh, next week, we're going to be launching into some uh, look at Azure Security Center, and we're going to spend a week or so on that and uh, just look at its features and what you can use that. And that will wind up our security uh, segments that we've been doing over the last several months in Azure Security, as well as other features that we've looked at. And we'll be moving into something new, uh, probably going to be moving into app migration strategies for Azure. So thanks for watching this edition of Tech on Fire with Blaze. If you like this content, please consider visiting us online at www.wintelect.com and there you can find about services that Wintelect offers including training and consulting services. Also, please consider subscribing to this channel by clicking on the subscribe button and clicking the bell icon to get notifications when new content becomes available and also comment down below. You can also follow me on Twitter at the one mule and also follow Wintelect on Twitter at Wintelect now or at Wintelect. We are constantly posting things about Azure related technologies and things related to software development. You can also reach us by email at consulting at Until next time, thank you.